The Sharks offense can't get cracking in the third period as they lose four to two to the Seattle Kraken. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite tanking team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. Probably part of the Locked On Network. We cover your team every day, even when their magic number is 10 points uh, to lock up the best odds for the NHL draft lottery. Uh, even if they can't find a goal in the third period, uh, even if Clem Koshin looks like uh, like a real deal bona fide boy. Um, so we're going to be discussing all that. Um, if you want to be an everyday, all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts or you can watch on YouTube as well. And like I said, today we're going to be talking about the Sharks 4-2 to two loss to the uh, Seattle Kraken. How the offense looked good. And this was actually one of the more entertaining games of the season. We're going to dig into the numbers behind this game. Look at how the lines performed. And Philip Beasted is coming to America. So we're going to be discussing Beasted. Uh, what to expect to see in his uh, kind of debut with the Barracuda. And what kind of where this puts him going forward. So before we get into all that... Do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. 4-2 loss uh, to the Seattle Kraken in a game that felt very much like in the beginning of the game this was going to be another seven to one type of game um because the sharks just kind of forgot how to play hockey for the first 10 minutes or so of the game um the kraken had multiple chances to kind of put this thing away um but that's why the kraken aren't a good team this year because they didn't put away the sharks and um Full credit to the Sharks who clawed back and looked in kind of looks like a, a competent hockey team for good chunks. As I thought this was a really fun game between two teams that kind of traded blows with each other, right? It was, you know, the Kraken come out first and kind of do their thing. And then the Sharks battle back in it and kind of, you know, and controlled the pace of play for it. We'll dig into the numbers, but the second period was basically all San Jose. Um, and then even the back end of the first period was all San Jose. And, and, um, then finally the Kraken kind of put the clamps on the Sharks in the third period. Um, but kind of, you know, it was good to see, especially after the game, we saw kind of some of the games we saw recently where we've seen the Sharks, especially the first period over the past few games have been really sluggish, but then found their way, right? You look back at the St. Louis game where, they were really sluggish in the first period. Um, they got three shots on goal, right? Second period, they put together, you know, some, some, a couple of good shifts here and there were able to kind of take advantage of some opportunities in the third period. They were basically playing, you know, park the bus and hope that Mackenzie Blackwood uh, would kind of lie, you know, give, give them the victory, which he did. You know, you look back against the wild, kind of the same formula. First period, they hung in there or they didn't do anything. And then they kind of crawled back into the game, but it wasn't, uh, it was kind of too little, too late. In this game, it was very much like both teams just kind of taking swings at each other. So at least an entertaining game um, at the end of the, the season here. But I think another kind of interesting kind of development from, what we've seen so far, the you know, since the trade deadline, and I, I think this game too, is the emergence of clean caution, who, again, the Sharks acquired from the Detroit Red Wings for Redeem Shimmick. Um, Shimmick, who is not part of the Sharks' future plans, right, was the captain of the Barracuda. Um, but clean caution looks like a real boy. Uh, he's a big boy, and 
continuing to add some something new right to the sharks and you know the sharks have a lot of their forwards kind of before Greer bit on the smaller side you know you go look at guys like Eklund and Bordolo and Gushin um you know kind of a little bit smaller guys and I'm always the I'm never like the be big you know you need to be a big player to score like I don't care as long as you're a good hockey player but it is nice to have some kind of diversity in their body types and the way guys play right um you want everyone to kind of fit together and clean caution so far he looks like to have found a home in san jose and after the game you know he was asked uh which i can just picture like kind of russian way i, I just kind of like the ivan from rocky ford just the way he's saying it but he was asked what he's been enjoying about it uh san jose and he just said ice time i think with a little bit of a wink and nod to san uh you know to the reporters but um you know he's been given a chance right and this is what you need to do as my career right you're kind of flipping these these stones trying to find these diamonds in the rough trying to find these acorns you know guys like phil Sedina, who's had a really strong season right um Clean caution who's come in here has been given an opportunity um, and he looks like a real player for the sharks. And you see that shot, the tonight, the, the goal he scored um, great tip Vlasic, uh, you know, with a, a very nice play by Vlasic caution with a really nice tip because of his body size, right? He's six foot four, 215 pounds is able to kind of um, almost like a power forward or a center in basketball, just kind of, establish himself like i'm like the post game right there right and Eklund, bordolo like they're again a little bit small guys but they do things differently so um and the sharks have added some more of these big boy guys and guys like b said who you think once he kind of continues to fill out um you know like they, they have you know quentin musty they got some more of these big boys coming but good to see him and you don't want this to be a Jacob Peterson kind of 2.0 where remember after last year, we were all like, Oh, Jacob Peterson's like a top six player for the sharks going forward. And right. Peterson's played a handful of games this year. And I know he's, he's out for the rest of the season with the Barracuda right now, but never kind of established himself this year. But um, I think clean caution who is, you know, does have a one year left on his deal. Very affordable deer. I think if I remember off the top of my head, it's two, um, like $2 million or something like that. I like, again, hopefully next year you're going to have a little bit more talent around you, but uh, yeah, $2 million for, for clean caution. Um, but like, I can't see why maybe not a first line role that he's playing right now, but being a really solid middle six guy who can add some scoring, um, add some physicality. You saw tonight had a couple of monster hits. Um, you know, Brandon Tanev, he almost put him in through the, the glass. Like, Caution's going to uh, caution's gonna put somebody through the glass one day. It's going to be amazing. Um, I kid, but seriously, it's going to be kind of amazing if he does. And, you know, it just kind of adding that, just adding a little bit difference. And that line with – him, Granlin, Granlin, who's kind of the the point guard of that line, right? Kind of the old school Chris Paul type of, of point guard where I'm just going to distribute, make sure everyone's having a good time. I'll get mine when I get mine. Um, you have Zettelin, who has got, um, you saw it tonight, got that beautiful, beautiful shot um, on the power play because of great passing. Um, you know, Granlin kind of setting him up there as well. Uh, also, Granlin behind the the net is just a thing to watch, thing of beauty. Mm. More Granlin behind the net. He's he's amazing back there. Um, and then Caution, who I think, again, kind of as that physicality, has that shot, whatever you kind of need him to do, that line just kind of really works together right now. Um, so I think as Sharks fans, again, another great night. An entertaining game. You got to see some fun stuff. Um, but you're one step closer to your goal of kind of trying to clinch the best odds. Um, so right now, 
uh, as of you know uh, Monday night, the old Tankathon. Um, Chicago and San Jose have both played seventy four games. Uh, Chicago plays on Tuesday, um, so the Sharks will kind of catch them. This uh, actually, the Sharks play on, uh, they play on Tuesday, and then they play Saturday, Sunday. So this is the week where uh, San Jose will kind of catch up to them. F- for good um they'll be kind of playing 74 you know the same amount of games here but sharks have a seven point lead at 42 points to 49 points on chicago both with eight uh eight games left so that puts the sharks magic number at 10 uh, basically the combination of sharks losses two points a loss um and chicago wins whatever so ties or straight up wins whatever combination of you gets to that um that's what uh, link kind of secures the top odds so the sharks lose five games out of the last eight they there's no matter what chicago does if the sharks lose five out of the last eight they're going to have the best odds going into the draft um if chicago wins a couple here i know their schedule we went through the schedule recently um but again just a quick reminder of chicago's schedule here uh so they play the islanders who are fighting for a playoff spot dallas who's an absolute monster um they play minnesota so da- dallas and minnesota on back to back this weekend minnesota is fighting for a playoff spot both those games are uh 12 30 pacific time games they play st louis who's fighting for a playoff spot nashville uh who's trying to secure their playoff spot carolina vegas la so they have a tough schedule down so i wouldn't count on a lot of points there but if you can sneak a couple points again every point matters here um so sharks are Sharks are in the driver's seat here um, going forward. But again, you need you need to lose five, basically five out of the last uh, eight games here, and you're going to have the best odds going into the, the uh, draft lottery. So uh, we'll dig more into this game. We'll look at the numbers behind this game, um, how there was just a bonanza of offense, and then what the crack, kind of how the crack had shut things down here in the third period. So we'll get to that here in just one minute. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on the big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, that's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Uh, that ad read, I bet the locked on Nets guy uh, probably enjoys that ad read. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know. I always think of the, the Brooklyn Nets every time I hear that ad read. Um, so with 52-36 of 5v5 time, and again, the Sharks offense came to play tonight. 59-54 uh, to f- 54 shot attempts in favor of the Sharks, 52.21%. Uh, Corsi four for the Sharks. Um, actual shots was 27 to 25 in favor of the Kraken, 20 to 26 scoring chances in favor of the Sharks, 14 to 10 high danger chances in favor of the Kraken, and then 3.26 to 2.41 expected goals for in favor of the Kraken. So, this is a very even game between both these teams, but the Kraken in the third period, I think, is, is kind of the difference here when they had a you know that one goal either trying to protect they were still pushing the offense there um and you saw that especially at the very very end of the game where the sharks were trying to get set up with the uh, with mckenzie blackwood pulled and the kraken just kind of played keep away from the sharks and the sharks just weren't able to kind of you know like they got really kind of maybe 20 seconds of, of good like six on five time and it just kind of fell apart there um but the Kraken in the third period had a 1.57 expected goals for. They were, um, they did a good job of creating scoring chances. They had 11 scoring chances, um, seven high danger chances. Like the Kraken were, did a good job of, and again, the Sharks are kind of playing, you know, a little bit more looser. They're trying to push for that tying goal. But the Kraken did a good job of of taking advantage. And if it wasn't for Mackenzie Blackwood, um, you know, holding down the fort there. 
this could have been, you know, the, the, the Kraken could have busted this game open much earlier. But um, the Sharks' second period, like I said, it was very much San Jose. 26-19 shot attempts um, in favor of San Jose. 13-8 scoring chances, 5-3 to three high danger chances, um, 0.92 expected goals for, and the Sharks, you could really took it. I mean, I know the Kraken had a very early power play, but kind of after that, it was all San Jose, all San Jose pushing in, um, you know, and you, they got rewarded with that clean caution goal and they were probably were due for another one just because of, of the way that they, they played in this game. Um, but that's how it goes sometimes when you are a tanking team. Um, so, Let's dig into the forward lines of this game. Um, we have the Zetterlin, Granlin, Caution line, um, Eklund, Cunning, Bailey, and then Bordolo, Sturm, Zadina, and then the Hoffman, Carpenter, LeBanc. Um, that was the, the lines. And again, um, the numbers are very favorable for the Sharks, especially that those top two lines. Um, the Granlin line played 11-39 at 5v5, 20-5 shot attempts, nine to two um actual shots had a goal gave up a goal expected goals for was one um that line was just outstanding tonight eight to two scoring chances three to one high danger chances and six four two zone starts so that gray line was cooking tonight um they they were great tonight so the eklund cunning bailey line played 11 16 19 to 11 shot attempts six to five actual shots 0.46 to 0.43 expected goals for nine to five scoring chances um five to two high danger chances uh with seven four three zone starts Eklund had like three two or three golden opportunities um that he's probably kicking himself for that he wasn't able to put away um there if, yeah he had a one where he was literally all by himself in front of grubauer and just uh i think grubauer got a piece of it um or i don't know if he got a piece of it or if he kind of influenced it there but he was wide open and it wasn't able to score there a couple of other opportunities where eklund's just he he was really close to, to scoring one tonight and eklund's been quietly putting up points for for the sharks so um in his last six games he's got two goals and four assists um and then even if you go back to his eight consecutive uh home games um he's got nine points in those those eight games if you're just looking at home games and he did have an assist tonight on, on the zettelin goal so eklund's been quietly putting up production especially despite this team um again not having a lot of production to to put up so um the Zadina Stern borderline played 819, 8 to 14 shot attempts, uh, 48 actual shots on goal, did give up a goal. Um, Zadina had a monster shift in the third period as they were trying to push uh, to score, to tie things up there. Um, and then we had Hoffman, Carpenter, LeBanc played 558, 4 to 6 shot attempts, 3 to 4 actual shots, um, did give up a goal as well. Um, expected goals is 0.09 to 0.33, three to two scoring chances, zero to two high danger chances. So, um, as for Mackenzie Lackwood, who has been stringing to together some um, great, great goaltending, um, tonight, again, not as the, the same volume of shots tonight. Um, he made 31 or 28 saves on 31 shots and all the, like that, Maddie Bonier shot with like all the shots where he didn't have too much of a chance on. Like I'm not faulting him for any of those, um, but he made some other spectacular saves. Three goals against uh, tonight. Um, 3.84 expected goals. Um, so again, like he is keeping you in these games. Like the, the Kraken probably should have scored closer to four goals. Um, nine high danger saves on 10 high danger shots. Five for five on the mid danger and 14 of 16 on the low danger for Mackenzie Blackwood. And uh, again, as I've stated before, as long as Mackenzie Blackwood is healthy, um, the Sharks have, he has flourished, flourished in San Jose, even despite um, the poor, poor run support that he's gotten. I think he, they mentioned he's uh, one of the worst, one of, he's, uh, he's less than two goals a game or somewhere around two goals a game um, that the Sharks score when he's in net, um, but has faced like the third most uh, shots per 60 during this time. So um, Blackwood's been great. 
really interested to see kind of long term what Blackwood kind of what the Sharks do with Blackwood. But I think you have to kind of assume he's probably going to be around here for the next little while, especially if he can if he can have another strong season going into next year. Maybe a team wants to trade for him, but I don't know if you're um, if you're Mike Greer, you kind of found something for again. A six round pick. Remember when people were mad about trading a six round pick for Mackenzie Blackwood? Um, yeah. A six round pick for Mackenzie Black. People were, were furious about that. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Mackenzie Blackwood's really good, man. He's been really good for San Jose. Um, he's I think he's been the best. I have to do my uh my kind of uh media vote and like they have different categories and one of them is the mvp and uh spoiler mackenzie blackwood is going to be my vote for the most valuable player for the sharks because um this team would be hot gar even more so hot garbage without mackenzie blackwood so um yeah we're gonna talk about phil beastead here uh in just one minute as beastead comes to america and kind of where he fits in with the barracuda kind of expectations for him um and why i think uh i think you're going to see him flourish more um in san jose than what we maybe saw in the shl so we'll get to that here in just one minute i know the nhl season is almost over and this one has been a long one sharks fans uh, regardless of their current standing, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, especially Daily Fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick some of your favorite players, whether they're NHL superstars like McDavid, Crosby, or McKinnon, or some of your favorite Sharks players like Granlin, Zettelin, or Eklund, and record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Sharks fans. You can win a 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code Locked on NHL. You'll get a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. All right. Phil Beasted um, coming to America. The Sharks announced this morning that they have as, uh, assigned him to the San Jose Barracuda. It was weird. I was actually driving to work this morning thinking about like, because again, you kind of like go into autopilot mode when you drive to work, or at least I do. Um, thinking about if if B said is going to kind of make that jump now. And I think this is I think we're going to see B said really kind of flourish here and develop well. Um, and a corresponding move, uh, the sharks recall Jack Sudnika. So now the sharks are actually out of recalls. They've used all four of their recalls this year, but but Sharks can always emergency recall people, right? Um, if guys get hurt, right? We know like Bear Banoff probably done for the year type of situation. Um, you know, guys get nicked up, right? They can't play, whatever. You can still emergency recall people to kind of make sure you have a full roster here. Um, so don't like you can still expect to see, I would expect to see Gushin. Um you know, if Shakir Mukumadol, I know Mukumadol left the game on, on Sunday with an injury. Or they never kind of said, but he did leave the game on Sunday um, and did not return. Like, you can still see some of these guys kind of play some some games here. Um, and the Barracuda are on a road trip right now, or kind of a long road trip here in Southern California. So it's not like they're, they're too far away. But uh, I think they are going to Texas here soon. Anyway, um, or they're playing Texas, whatever. But back to so Jack Sudika is up. And I think this kind of opens the door for Beasted to play top six minutes um, with the Barracuda, which is what he needs to do, right? He was playing third line minutes in the SHL. Um, wasn't playing like a whole, like you kind of wanted him to, to really make that jump this year. And I don't think he kind of had the production that we hope for as, as Sharks fans. And, um, 
Lincoln Ping was was a better team, right? They made the playoffs this year, last year, uh, last season that they didn't make the playoffs. Um, but it was, you know, I'm trying to pull up uh, what his kind of ice time and stuff like that. But um, B said he's going to get more ice time, which is what he needs, right? That that's kind that's that's the big thing is he needs the, this ice time right now to kind of develop. And, you know, I, people were saying, well, why does he just play in the NHL? He's not NHL ready. And I, I, that would be one of, I think the worst things for him to do is just to throw him in there uh, right now and just say like, have at it kid. Um, it's just, it's, I think it's just tough, right? For a guy like baby steps here. Like let's, let's, let's let him develop. Like people are, comp- you know, worried about Will Smith, going from college to the pros. Same thing with B-Sid, right? Um, so B-Sid plays 16. Oh, this is the playoffs. So he played 16, 18. That was also with like, um, you know, multi, like overtime games there too. So um, I'm trying to pull up his uh, regular stats here. Give me a second. Um, but like he, he needs to play these top six minutes and get used to a smaller ice surface. But I think, going to the smaller ice surface is going to do so much more for him um, just because of, I think his style of play, you know, he's one of the, one of those big body guys um, who is good. You know, I think he's got soft hands. He's good kind of in front of the net presence and stuff like that. But I think he still gets a little bit lost defensively, you know, watching his games in Sweden, bigger ice surface, more space for him to kind of cover and track. I think him playing on, on playing here um, in a smaller ice surface. And I think having kind of some bigger players around, you know, if, if he's playing with like, a, um, I don't know, actually, I wonder who the best line I could see them maybe putting a guy like, a Todd or a Sabrin, kind of a crafty veteran with him, and then maybe a scoring threat like a Gushin, something like that, to kind of put him in the best position to succeed. Um, but I'm I'm still I you want to kind of take it slow with him and don't overdo it here and making sure that you're like again putting him in a, a tough position to um where he's not kind of being asked to do too much here at, at, at too quickly. So, um, but yeah, I think a kind of top six role, especially now with Studnika, who's going to be up in, in the NHL. Um, I think that that's going to be a really nice spot for him. You can put him on the power play. I think that net front presence on the power play, which he's done in the SHL, you know, you have guys like Sabrin and Todd and Cole Castles kind of playing those roles right now. I think B said, who's, you know, definitely has a higher ceiling than those guys uh, doesn't have the crafty veteranness of those guys, but I think he's going to be in a really nice spot to, to succeed, especially right now with the the barricade of, there's no pressure on them, right? They're playing spoiler role. They're they're not going to the playoffs. They've been officially eliminated from the the playoffs here. Um, I, I really think that he's going to be put in a good spot to kind of start to kind of grow in the SHL this year. Or so I finally got it pulled up. He played under 13 minutes a game, like. In the AHL, I don't see why he's not going to be playing like 17, 18 minutes a game because again they don't have a lot of kind of top six bona fide centers and they want him to develop. And I think that's the best way for him to develop is just to play, play, get real ice time. And he put him in North America, like putting him in the NHL right now, he's probably going to play like fourth line minutes playing, you know, what we saw Ryan Carpenter play like five minutes of five V five time. Um, yes. Ryan Carpenter plays out on the special teams, et cetera, et cetera. But just let him grow, let him develop. There's no rush with, with a guy like Beastead. Um, and I think helping him find his defensive game because and become that good two-way center is going to be the best way for him to kind of his path forward to being an impact player, right? Is um, being a creator, distributor, and then kind of a greasy goal um, type of guy, but then also being a solid defensive center, I think is his path forward to being – uh, a key contributor for the Sharks. And I think playing, spending the, this rest of the season 
and a good chunk, if not all of next season, the AHL um, is going to be the best thing for him. And his contract, they won't, you don't have to worry about it. His ELC will kick in next year. So he'll, he'll be here. He's here for good now. So um, we'll definitely have more about B said. We'll, we'll watch his game because they bear could have played on Wednesday night. Uh, so we'll probably, for Thursday's night game, we'll probably talk about if Beastead plays. Hopefully, he plays. Uh, we'll talk about him. You know how his first impression was in the. Uh, we'll talk about that this week and make sure we get you guys covered there. So make sure you follow along wherever you get podcasts. And of course you can watch on YouTube as well. I uh, got a really good interview for you guys tomorrow. So make sure you guys are following along for that. Um, you can follow the show. Like I said, wherever you listen to podcasts, watch on YouTube, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. You can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole until tomorrow. Bye friends. <laughs>